Good morning and welcome to worship at Rock of Ages Lutheran Church here in Wildwood, Florida on this the 17th Sunday after the season of Pentecost. We're pleased that you have chosen to take some time to worship with us this morning in this virtual way and we pray that it'll be a blessing to you. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, Either way, we would invite you to uh, provide a comment indicating where you're watching from. And if you have a particular prayer request, you can email that to our church, rockofagelutheran at gmail.com. And we would be honored to include your prayer request with, with ours. So let's go ahead today and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship with music. I bring you a word of God's peace and invite you to share that peace with whomever you're with. Our gathering hymn today is Jesus' name above all names. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin before God and before one another. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin and receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry. Friend, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Jesus Christ, it's my privilege, it's my humble privilege to be able to say to all of us present and all of you there that your sins have been forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and our failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our praise song today is Lord whose love in humble service. minds and your hearts now to hear God's holy word. Good morning. <clears throat> the first reading is from Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, the preface. Ezekiel challenges those who think they cannot change because of what their parents were and did or who think they cannot reverse their own previous behavior. God insistently invites people to turn and live. And the reading, verses 1 to 4 and 25 to 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten our sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? 
when the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right. They shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, <clears throat> they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise <clears throat> iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. God. Our second reading for today is from the second chapter of Philippians, the preface. As part of a call for harmony rather than self-seeking, Paul uses a very early Christian hymn that extols the selflessness of Christ in his obedient death on the cross. Christ's selfless perspective is to be the essential perspective we share as a foundation for Christian accord. And the reading verses 1 to 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and one mind. Do nothing, <clears throat> do nothing from self, selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, self, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the gospel writer Matthew. The preface, after driving the money changers out of the temple, Jesus begins teaching there. His authority is questioned by the religious leaders who are supposed to be in charge of the temple. The reading. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. 
If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Well, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But he later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and, and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the Father? And they said, the first. And Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the pro prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Well, our text today is one of a series of, of controversies that will occur over the next couple of weeks' readings, and it's between Jesus and the authorities. Uh, the form of these questions, uh, the form of these uh, conflicts come in the form of a question and uh, an answer. Uh, the authorities present a question, and then Jesus answers them, and it, it all takes place in the temple. Uh, over the next few weeks, we will encounter five of these conflicts, um, and the leaders end up leaving speechless, much as Satan did after tempting Jesus in the desert. So the first controversy that presents itself in our scripture today is that of authority. You see, the Pharisees were accustomed to uh, people basically standing and saluting in their presence. They, after all, were viewed as the experts on the Torah and of the laws of the Jews. And so they expected everybody to acquiesce to their interpretations and they did not expect anybody to challenge them. But you see, there's a new teacher in town now. Jesus, a rabbi, uh, comes into their presence and he, he does miracles. Miracles, you see, were the province of soothsayers and magicians uh, in the people's minds. But when Jesus came along and was able to perform healing miracles, this was quite something different. The leaders then didn't know how to respond to it other than to call him a heretic, to challenge what he thought was his authority. So they wanted to expose him as a fraud. So in the context of this story today, Jesus uh, told the story ab about the two sons. And if you'll recall what we just read, uh, one son was asked by the father if, if he would go uh, and work in the fields. And the son said, no, uh, no I'm not going to go. But he went anyway. And he did the work of the father. The second son was asked the same questions. And he said, yeah, I'll go. But he didn't go. The question from Jesus was, which son obeyed? And uh, recall what the leaders said. They answered that it was the first son, the one who said, no, I'm not going to go, who ended up going. I tell you the truth, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you, Jesus said. For John came to show <clears throat> you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and you did not believe him. Well, the leaders were shocked. They'd never had anybody challenge their authority, their interpretation of scripture. How dare he? How dare this uh, new rabbi in their midst 
challenge their authority, the authority that they had borne for generation upon generation. You know, there's a, a legend I came across that I thought, I thought was interesting. It's a Japanese legend, and uh, it's about uh, earless people, earless people. You see, there was a man who died and, and he went to heaven and he saw shelves full of ears. I mean, can you picture that? Shelves full of ears from people who listened to the word of God, but never acted. Only their ears went to heaven. You see, Jesus is dealing with earless religious people. And so the question travels across the millennia to us. Are we earless people? Are, 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 do we only listen but not really hear? That's a question for each of us to grapple with. The second thing that comes out of this, this lesson today is that God's grace is shocking. Shocking. Imagine Jesus coming into the temple and splashing pink paint on all the walls. That wouldn't have been any more shocking than for him to come into the temple and challenge the wisdom of the Pharisees. Um, you can't put boundaries on God's grace. God's grace is so extensive and, and so pervasive and so all-inclusive that nobody is outside of God's grace. I don't know if you uh, were... Uh, viewers of uh, the American Idol program a couple of years ago, there was a, a singer who had an absolutely stunning voice. Her name was Ketchy, and she was an African woman who had been in a plane crash in which 102 people died. She was one of only two who survived. She was horribly disfigured in the fire. She was shocking, basically, to look at. But if you didn't look at her and just listened to her voice, you'd be struck by the beauty and the majesty of the tone of her, of her voice. Likewise, I, I found uh, something parallel to the story in the movie Hoop Dreams. That's a, a kind of an old one. Uh, and it's the story of a a very talented kid who, who loved basketball. He lived, ate, and breathed basketball. But he had a coach from hell. He had a coach that just drove him relentlessly, never praised him, never encouraged him. And, and gradually, the kid lost his will to play. And then he started making a whole lot of bad choices. Conversely, there was a less talented kid on this team who had many obstacles in his life and no help. He certainly got, didn't get any from this coach. But he persevered and he, he went on to college and he, he played basketball there and he achieved some success. He went on to succeed in life. You see, the Pharisees were like this demanding coach the Pharisees were, were like the judging public of, of someone disfigured. They, they devalued them like the kids on the basketball team. They were not provided encouragement. And, and that's the environment that the people lived in under the Pharisees. It was all about law. It was all about judgment. It was all about sin. It was all about power and control. The Pharisees wanted perfection from everybody. But that's not how you get to heaven. Being perfect is not only impossible, but it's not how we find our way into the heavenly realm. You see, Jesus chose love and acceptance. He, he was not judgmental. He had nothing but love in his heart for all people, no matter their station in life, no matter how beaten down they were, no matter how rejected they were in society. You see, we are indeed grace-filled 
because of the love of Jesus Christ. So how then are we to live our lives today? Well, like I said, we're grace-filled and, and we're called to reach out to the, the, the disfigured, the rejected. We're, we're called to bring into a state of encouragement, acceptance, and grace those who may not have the skill of some of the greater athletes around us. We are called to lift them up. We are called to extend God's message of grace. I don't know if you remember uh, years ago, the, the, the famous movie, The Passion of the Christ. Um, much of what we remember about it was just how gory it was. The, the scourging of Christ was brutal. It seemed interminable on the film. In, um, I can't remember how many years ago it was, but I was uh, down in the mountains of Peru with the Quechua people, about 11,000 feet up in the Andes, um, and was part of a, a little church service in an adobe church that couldn't have been more than 15 feet square. And we had run uh, an electric cable up from a village several thousand feet below so that we could run a projector and we showed the passion of the Christ. I'll never forget standing in front of a room filled with 50 or more of these colorful brown people with huge eyes staring at us foreigners, us gigantic white people in, in front of them. And when the scene uh, came on the screen of uh, Jesus bloodied and battered and bowed, the whole room just cried and wailed. Well, the message that we were able to impart to them afterwards was that Jesus incurred all of the suffering that bore our sin. Your sin, my sin. He was the coach that encouraged. He was the one that invited in the outcast. The one who said, come to me, all you are burdened and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Nobody's excluded, not the Quechua people in the Andes Mountains, not Quechua, not the kids on the basketball team. Another story that I think illustrates God's acceptance and his refusal to exclude everybody was, or anybody, was the story of James Meredith. You got to reach back in your memory on this one. James Meredith, you see, was the first black student admitted to the University of Mississippi in 1962. And he was participating in a demonstration march, and he ended up being shot and was hospitalized and lost his life. But what happened after that was hundreds and hundreds of other students then picked up the effort and continued the march. And the crowds continued to march until they reached the Mississippi capital. You see, the kingdom of God is kind of like this. There was one man who was persecuted and slain who started out to accept everyone to include everyone. And he was tortured and punished as a result of it. And he found himself crucified on a cross. However, his wounds were healed by God. Just as our wounds are healed, no matter how rejected we are, no matter how broken we are, no matter how sinful we are, God gave us Jesus Christ to include us, to love us unconditionally. We are a part of the kingdom of God and grace reigns supreme. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Provide safety over Ken and Don Bishop, our missionaries in Kosovo. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Your son took all of bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged, so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Watch over all those impacted by recent fires, earthquakes, floods, and tornadoes. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Turn the nations toward life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits. Where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Our lives are yours, O God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, especially those listed on our prayer list, as well as those we now name with our voice or in the silence of our heart. Death. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused and neglected, hungry and um, exploited, bullied, or lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Turn this congregation away from our own interests toward the interest of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Protect those caring for COVID-19 patients, as well as all healthcare providers, police, firemen, and other frontline providers. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Bless Pastor Don and his family as they celebrate his mother's life this weekend. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord, as all people say, Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. And also with you. We take this time during our offering to thank you for your continued support and faithfulness through your um, contributions to Rock of Ages here in Wildwood, Florida, uh, whether it be electronic or by mail, we really, really appreciate um, your contributions. <clears throat>
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us unite our voices in the prayer that our, our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we take our leave, I would like to say thank you yet again for spending some time with us in worship this morning. We hope that this has been a blessing for you, and we look forward to inviting you next week to worship here with us at Rock of Ages in Wildwood, Florida. And now hear these words as we take our leave. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing song today is Hallelujah, we sing your praises. Good news. Thanks be to God.